suppose we should talk a little bit about the DUP. They're a very interesting party. Do you want to give us a little background into their where they came from and what kind of politics they represent today? Because, you know, we see the, you know, the dominant, despite all these things we're talking about, despite the changes in, in the demographics and this, the changes in a kind of a labour aristocracy that may have been there in the past for Protestant workers that is not really the case anymore. There's still the dominant party are the kind of rejectionist parties within the Protestant community, the unionist community today. Yeah, well, of course, the sort of DUP was a, was originally founded by by in Paisley. Maybe he was the sort of leading figure of it for sure many years. And, and I mean, he was the leading spokesperson for traditional sort of unionism and for traditional Protestantism. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, he, he, he had the whole even evangelical Protestant view that Protestantism, I mean, and this is something which we haven't talked about it, but sort of Protestantism had had was a superior culture, a superior religion than Catholicism. You know, and I mean, he 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 ascribed that 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 sort of the Pope, for instance, was sort of was a sort of antichrist of the Bible, and so on. It wasn't even so. They weren't even proper Christians, these sort of Catholics, you know. And I mean, I mean, this is again, uh, isn't Paisley isn't the only person in the world who believes this, you know. But I mean, so, 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 so I mean, he saw history, if you like, often a sort of Catholic plot, you know. Everything was a was a sort of Catholic plot. I mean, he he denounced the European Union or the became as a sort of Catholic plot at the time, you know, and then it was a plot to win over so that the Catholic Church would sort of finally rule uh, Ireland as a whole and things like this. And so they had these ideas. But the thing what Paisley, what made Paisley's success was that he he said, if you agree to this change, this reform, the Catholics won't be satisfied, they will demand more and more and more and more. And I mean, he became, if you like, the sort of the, sort of the prophet, both in the biblical sense and in the political sense. And he formed this sort of DUP. And eventually, uh, but I mean, he, he, uh, he eventually obviously changed, because he eventually went into power sharing with... Sinn Féin. But he was then overthrown by his, both his church, the Free Presbyterian Church, and by the DUP. And I mean, he followed along, I mean, he had overthrown three or four leaders of Northern Ireland unionism, and he eventually became a victim of this, of the same process. And of course, the DUP opposed the Good Friday Agreement. And although that was that was supported by about 50% of Protestants at the time, as the years went on, more and more Protestants began to feel that they'd got a raw deal with the, the Good Friday Agreement. And for the first time, really, Paisley and the DUP who had always opposed that said, "We told you so. This was wrong. We told you this is this is this is this is going to attack Protestantism. This is going to attack our traditional rights, and so on and so on." And elements of the Good Friday Agreement did indeed do that, and so the DUP support grew and grew and grew, and it was the Good Friday Agreement which changed it from being a minority unionist party into a majority unionist party, right? And and again, this is something which is which sort of needs to be to be sort of stressed really. And that it, it it wasn't simply things like Brexit which have given support to the sort of DUP, but it's also their sort of opposition to the Good Friday Agreement fulfilled the traditional role of the right wing of unionism, which was warning against sellouts and been warning against sellouts and been denouncing sellouts by the British government from 1970 onwards. And for them, the Good Friday 
agreement was just one more one more sale out. And I mean, if you think of the things which the Good Friday Agreement actually did, you know, I mean, it abolished the RUC, which was the traditional police service of sort of Northern Ireland, and sought to replace it with a much more mixed force. It said it uh, outlawed discrimination. It took the it 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 changed the the sort of law on sort of things like even flying the Union Jack, you know, and it, it and of course it said you you have to share power with these Catholics, you know. I mean that's it. Now you have to share power with these nationalist Catholics, and all of these things were not the Northern Ireland many Unionists grew up with and saying, but you're you're changing our very society, as indeed the Good Friday Agreement has threatened to actually do. And now you've got things like the Irish language, if you like, which is which is now to be treated as a sort of equal partner to the English uh, language. And again, all these things have affected the sentiments of sort of Protestants and sustained the sort of DUP and their whole things that we've been sold out by the bits we've been we're being taken over by the sort of nationalists and so on. And the sole siege mentality, which sort of unionism has been famous for, and Protestantism with the Northern Ireland, the more illiberal version of it, um, has been sort of famous for, has to an extent been sustained by the by sort of all of this, you know. So it again, but again, the question arises, okay, but you know, what do you do? Where do you go from here, you know?